Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in. As always, if it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So today I'm going to have a quick look at the Celestron 20mm erect image eyepiece. This is for Newtonian telescopes only, not refractors. And so it's designed to you. it comes as standard with telescopes such as the Astromaster 114, 130 EQs and the Powerseeker 127 EQ. And it gives an erect image. So, the question is, is it any good? Which I could probably answer in a few words, but I'll... We'll give it a chance, because it does have some advantages. So, if using for terrestrial use, um, if you're out, out and about at a, a nice location, or if you're lucky enough to have a, a garden with a fantastic view of the countryside, then yes, if you want to do a bit of wildlife, look at the buildings and even a bit of people watching if that's what will take your fancy. Yeah, you can see everything with the image right way up. Or also, if you like looking at ships at sea or near where I live, ships going down the estuary at the Humber. So yes, it does have its advantages and it's also a nice eye relief as well. Disadvantages. Um, some people like to use a moon filter or a light pollution filter. This does not accept filters. Um, build quality, there is a lot of plastic in here and I'll, I'll come on to a Plossal eyepiece in a second just to show the difference. But the main thing with this is image quality and field of view. Compared to a Plossal eyepiece of similar focal length and if it's a good like multi-coated or fully multi-coated Plossal, the difference in contrast is, is, is amazing and a step up from one of these. But also, and probably more importantly, if it comes to finding things in the night sky, field of view. Both the apparent field of view, by apparent I mean the size of the circle when you look through the eyepiece, is very narrow. I think it's about 40 degrees, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below with that. But also the visual field of view. Now, and the amount of stars that you can see in one go. But just an, another thing in its favour, well, potentially, if you were to, your first ever telescope, and you, it's an Astro Master 130 for example, you look through the moon at this, and I think it will give about 30 something magnification thereabouts, you'll be able to see the, the craters, the mountain ranges, and you'll think, wow, this is fantastic. But then, if you were to look at the same thing through a Plossal eyepiece, and this is a 17 millimeters, both the the difference, if you looked through that first, you'd think fantastic. But if you were to look through a, a high quality plus light piece like this olive on one first and then go back to the erect image one, you'll realise what you've been missing out on. The even though this eyepiece gives greater magnification, it gives a wider field of view both visual and the apparent field of view, which I think with this one is around about 50, 52 degrees. So it's win-win all round. And believe me, when it comes to astronomy, it doesn't matter if it's an erect image eyepiece or not. Uh, the moon, stars and planets, they're all round anyway, so that doesn't make any difference. And before anybody jumps on me, I am aware that Jupiter and Saturn are quite wider at the equator, and so they are not a perfect circle. I'll get that out of the way. That believe me, you will soon get used to using a non erect image eyepiece um, when it comes to centering stars. You, you will think in opposite, as I call it, when it comes to. So, if a star is on the left hand side, you don't move the telescope to the left, you want the star to move right to get to the center. You move the telescope to the right, and you, your eyes soon get used to thinking opposite, as I call it. Which makes makes me wonder why on earth do Celestron, with the power seekers as well, have one erect image eyepiece and one non-erect eyepiece? Yeah, j just to get you a bit confused, uh, have one of each rather than two erect image eyepieces or two standard Plossal eyepieces. And the Plossals, by the way, even though there's not a prism in here, it is a much heavier eyepiece. That's because there's a lot less plastic in this one. So summing up, is the Celestron erect image eyepiece you get with the some Newtonian Celestrons as standard 
is it any good? Well, yes, uh, if you use it for terrestrial use and just for starting out in astronomy. But believe me, as you get more wanting to look at fainter objects, you will want something with a, a wider, sharper view, and that's when you should move on to a plossel. And what you'll find is uh, whoever you purchase your telescope from, ho hopefully us, get me plug out of the way, if you ask really, really nicely, just ask, you know, what plus slide pieces have you, have you got in stock, you know, for an extra little few quid, like what will you put in? And if you ask really nicely, you know, you might put, even put one in free of charge. Because I know that uh, with our while stocks last, while our Celestron Power Seeker 127, um, I, I am now including a pl an extra plus slide piece, 25mm, free of charge, but that's just while stocks last. So, I hope that helps. That's a quick look at the Celestron 20mm erect image eyepieces, eyepiece. Its advantages, which it does have, and disadvantages, which it probably has more of. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and please check out the link in the description below.